I am Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter Redox Reactions. I was telling you about Redox Indicators in the past few two videos. So continuing with our discussion of Redox Indicators, I told you about self indicators and I told you about internal indicators. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the third category of Redox Indicators, that is external indicators. In the previous video, we carried out the titration of potassium dichromate against oxalic acid. And what was the internal indicator that we used? We used diphenylamine in orthophosphoric acid. And what did we do? We took the two drops of diphenylamine and two milliliters of orthophosphoric acid and we put it into the reaction mixture. And that is why we call it an internal indicator. So by that definition, an external indicator would be an indicator which changes its color in the oxidized and the reduced form, but it is not added to the reaction mixture, it is kept outside the reaction mixture. And therefore the name external indicator is given to it, right? So what would an external indicator be? They are based on some visible reactions, that is a change. When is a reaction visible? When there is a change in color, when there is some gas evolving out of it. And since we are talking of indicators, uh, a visible change would be a change in color. So they are based on some visible reactions with titrated substances. Titrated substances means the reaction has already occurred and this reaction is not going to take place in the reaction mixture. After the titration has occurred, this, is going to, uh, this reaction is going to take place outside. So along with suitable reagents, of course, the indicator that you use must react with the reagents that you are and uh, that you have chosen for your titration. If they do not react, of course, this substance would not act as an indicator in that case. Now, the titration that we did yesterday, where we took oxalic acid and potassium dichromate, uh, where the internal indicator was diphenylamine and uh, with a little orthophosphoric acid. In this case, when you're using an external indicator, we do not use diphenylamine and orthophosphoric acid. Instead, we use the indicator potassium ferricyanide. Let me just explain this formula a little to you. Potassium, of course, we know has a charge of plus one. It is an alkali metal. Iron has two charges. It can show an oxidation state of plus two and it can show an oxidation state of plus three. When it shows an oxidation state of plus two, we usually call it a ferrous ion. And when it shows an oxidation state of plus three, we call it a ferric ion. So the name itself shows a little which ion would this be. It is ferricyanide, so it's the ferric ion. It means in this iron should have a charge of plus three. Let us have a look now. Cyanide has a, is a negatively charged ion and cyanide ion has a charge of minus one. So there are six cyanide ions, which means there are six negative charges. So if there are six negative charges, what should the charge on iron be? Potassium has a charge of one and there are three potassium. So there are three positive charges. There are six negative charges. So how many charges, how many more positive charges are required? Three. So this iron should have a charge of plus three. In other words, in potassium ferricyanide, iron has a has a, an oxidation state of plus three, right? Now, when you use this, uh, we use this um, what uh, indicator when we carry out the titration of ferrous ions or uh, with the potassium dichromate ions or oxalic acid when you're carrying out its uh, its titration against potassium dichromate. So what do we do? We take potassium dichromate in the burette and we take oxalic acid or more salt that is ferrous ammonium sulfate in the flask. So what do we do? We take 10 milliliters of the, uh, the wh whatever oxalic acid or more salt, whatever you're titrating it against the potassium dichromate solution. And we take 10 ml of it and we put it in the flask and we add 10 milliliters roughly uh, in a test tube we measured a huge sulfuric acid because this reaction has to take place in acidic medium. So we add 10 milliliters of that in the flask and we carry out our titration. In the internal indicator, we had added the indicator to the flask. Diphenylamine in orthophosphoric acid was added to the flask. But in ex when you are using an external indicator, the indicator that is potassium ferricyanide, we do not, a solution of potassium ferricyanide, we do not 
put it in the flask. Rather, we take a grooved tile. What is a grooved tile? It is a tile that has got pits in it, small pits. You know, in the biology lab, when you make those uh, uh, slides of plant tissue and uh, whatever, xylem and I don't, I do not even remember that. You used to use those grooved tiles to stain your slides. So the tile is a ceramic tile and it has got little pits in it and uh, little pits which can have just a few drops, a couple of drops of any reagent that you're using. So that is what you do. You take the groove tile, it has got pits in it, little small little grooves and in these grooves, each groove you start pouring, you take a dropper and with the help of a dropper you put a drop each of the uh, of potassium ferricyanide solution in all the grooves. Now when you do this, you start your titration. When you start your titration, you add the potassium dichromate solution to either oxalic acid or um, ferrous ammonium more salt solution. And as you keep adding it, you want to know whether the end point has been achieved, which you cannot know if since the uh, indicator is not in the solution. So what will you do? You'll add a little and then you'll stop the reaction. You will take a dry glass rod, you will dip it into the solution and the glass rod which has been dipped into the reaction mixture will then be put into one of the grooves. You will dip it into the drop of the uh, indicator in the groove. When you do that, you will notice that the color of the, uh, of the indicator will change. Potassium ferricyanide is, uh, is a yellowish solution. So what you get is a blue colored solution, but since it, it may react with the yellow and it may appear a little greenish to you, but it produces a blue, blue colored solution. So you see the blue colored solution and then you find if you get the blue color, it means that the, uh, the reaction, the end point has not been achieved. Why? Because you get the blue color because of the ferrous ions, that is, when you're using the potassium, uh, when you're using, let us say, more salt, it is ferrous ions which would result in the formation of a complex, which is, um, take a look at this. When you have ferrous ions in ferrous from more salt, ferrous ammonium sulfate, the ferrous ions combine with potassium ferricyanide there and it results in a complex which is known as ferrous fer ferroferricyanide. Ferro because it is 2 positive and ferri was Fe3 positive. So you get ferro ferri point, uh, ferricyanide complex and this complex is blue in color. So you will see a little blue colored, uh, the solution will turn blue. And as long as the reaction is taking place, the ferrous, what is happening in the reaction? The potassium dichromate is getting reduced and it is giving Cr3 positive ions. The ferrous ions and more salt are getting converted into ferric ions, which means the more salt would be getting oxidized or the oxalic acid that you added is getting oxidized. Because in oxalic acid, the oxidation state of carbon is plus 3 and it increases to plus 4, which means oxidation number is increasing, therefore it is undergoing oxidation. So the potassium dichromate solution that you have in the burette is actually undergoing reduction or it is the oxidant. And what you have in the flask, either one of these, is the reductant or it is getting oxidized. So as long as the ferrous ions are present or the reduced form of these compounds is present to, or these ions is present, it will react with the uh, potassium ferricyanide solution and give a blue color, which may appear green. But as the quantity of the ferrous ions or the oxalate ions goes on decreasing, of the reduced form goes on decreasing, the color, the intensity of this color goes on decreasing. So you add, you see when the color comes, you add more of the potassium dichromate to it. Again, after a while, you dry up your glass rod, you wash it, you dry it up and again you dip it in it and put it in the second group. Now you will see the color has become fainter. Then you will again carry out more, pour a little more and then again wash your glass rod, dry it up, dip it in it and try it in the third. You will continue as the color becomes really, really faint. That is your hint that the end point is almost closed. Why? Because that is your hint that these reactants in their reduced form are really very less now or the reaction, all of the reduced form has been used up and has been converted into the oxidized form. And it is the reduced form which gives the color. 
So it means you are close to the end point. As the end point comes closer, you start to slow down the speed of your burette, the liquid coming down from the burette. You bring it drop wise and again test it until you get a colorless solution. When you put the glass rod here and you add it to one of the grooves, you do not get a color change. That indicates your, that last drop would indicate your end point. Now, there is a problem with this. That last drop will indicate your end point, so that is your external indicator. But there are this technique of using an external indicator is some is a uh, is a method that would be last in your preference. You would not like to use it. Why? Because this is not a very accurate method. The reason being that time and time again you are dipping a rod into this, which can introduce contamination. One point. Secondly, you are as you whatever little is clinging to the glass rod, the concentration here is changing. Even if it is a minuscule amount, it is changing the concentration of the solution here. Therefore, your end point, whatever it would be, would definitely have some error in it. So, this is not a very reliable method, but when you do not have a method which is um, uh, which can be carried out when you cannot add an indicator an internal indicator there is you do not have that option or it is not a self indicator in that case you may as a last resort you may choose to use an external indicator but this should never be your first preference that having been said let us just understand read this out for you again so we take potassium dichromate in the burette and more salt or the oxalic acid solution in the flask and we put drops of the indicator in a grooved tile and what happens the potassium dichromate is undergoing reduction and the ferrous ammonium sulfate that is more salt or oxalic acid are undergoing oxidation so what happens what is this blue color due to the fence ions or the uh, or the reduced form of these they combine with the potassium ferricyanide and result in another complex that is ferrofericyanide which is a blue colored compound so as you get the more the concentration of ferrofericyanide the darker would be the blue color and uh, which is a blue co complex the blue color gets fainter and fainter as the fe2 positive ions get used up until it finally turns colorless and that point where it turns colorless would be your end point. So we get blue color in the groove tile that gets fainter and fainter until it shows no color change. And how do you do the check? How do you do it? You do not take a dropper and take a few drops and then uh, put it here. Each time you dip your solution in, you, have, you need to use a glass rod so that you cause minimum error. Error you will introduce every time you take a reading, you are introducing error into your final point. So that's the reason why this is not the most desirable method. So every time you will use a glass rod, which would be dipped in the reaction mixture to test the end point. What happens at the end point? Once the end point has occurred, why do we not get the, why do we not get the blue color? Because when the end point has occurred, all of the ferrous ions have got converted into ferric ions and all of the oxalate ions have got converted into carbon dioxide, which means they have been reduced. In that state, let us say we took more salt and you add it to the indicator. Now, the last drop after the reaction is completed, when you, you only have ferric ions, you do not have ferrous ions. So when you add the ferric ion to this, what happens is that it when you add ferric ions or the reaction that has been completed, um, to potassium ferricyanide, it results in another complex which is known as the feriferocyanide complex. And the feriferocyanide complex is slightly brown in color and since the solution itself is yellow, you will not see that uh, change in color. Or if you keep doing more and more of it, it might get slightly darker, but that is where you do not see a change in color of the, of the potassium ferricyanide. Therefore, the feriferocyanide uh, complex is formed which shows that the reaction is complete. Then in the last point which was really important and I put a star here so that I do not forget mentioning this is that 
internal indicator would any day be preferred to an external indicator because an internal indicator would not introduce error in your endpoint whatever is the measurement in the pipette that you did look whenever you are carrying out any uh, lip, uh, method in the laboratory there is always a little error in the instrument or in your measurement there would be a little human error introduced some error is almost always there but we keep that into consideration but in this case in this technique you whatever error unknowingly you do you are already doing it this technique itself is knowingly carrying out the errors you are knowingly doing putting a rod in and taking away a little bit of solution with every reading therefore you are introducing error every time you dip the glass rod into it therefore this is not the best technique for or this is not the best way to ha use an indicator and must only be used when you do not have other options so i hope you found this uh, video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends tell it to as many children who you feel could benefit from my channel uh, it would be a great help to me and uh, well thank you for watching and keep returning for more and more videos in chemistry bye bye for now